Sunday here, we got NXT TakeOver War Games. Five matches announced for the show. War Games Men, War Games Women, Team Shotzi, Shotzi, Ember, Rhea, and Io versus Candice, Dakota, Raquel, and Tony. We got the men, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Bobby Fish versus McAfee, Pete Dunne, Danny Burch, and Oni Lorcan. Leon Ruff, Johnny Gargano, and Damian Priest for the North American title. Loomis and Grimes in a strap match. And Timothy Thatcher versus Tommaso Ciampa. Five matches, Dave. What do you think about this show? Well, I mean, takeovers are always, takeovers are always good. Um, I think that the key to the show... I think the the men's war games match will be tremendous. It always is. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I think it's a given. Uh, the women's war games match could be really good. It probably will be w very well laid out. Um, should be very good. But that's kind of the... That and the North American title are the two keys. If those matches really deliver, then it's going to be a great show. Um, Grimes and Loomis, strap match. I don't know. I mean... Cameron Grimes is a really entertaining wrestler. He can pretty much carry a lot, but um, yeah, it might be okay. And Thatcher and Ciampa, uh, I'm sure, will be good. Um, so, you know, it looks like I don't. It doesn't feel to me like one of the great takeovers. And really, the takeovers like this year have been. Um, or the, I won't say the whole year because I think the first one was really strong, but the the, the recent takeovers have been well below the standard of the takeovers of the last, you know, four or five years where they've all been awesome. This one should be better than the last ones, but um, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a classic one, but maybe, maybe it will. I mean, you know, they lay these, you know, they give you five matches. They go whatever it is, two and a half hours usually. This one may go longer because of the two War Games matches, but they usually... But they shorten the, the time where it's like three-minute intervals now instead of five or something like that? They haven't said, have they? I don't know if they've said officially, but I thought I'd heard that. They were shortening the intervals. I could be totally out of my mind. I don't know. I mean, it, it's... it's They did... They, there was one match where they did that, but I don't think it was War Games. Um, but we'll see. Um, I... Um, you know what I think? That might have been the Casino Battle Royal. Hmm. I'm not sure where they may have shortened the, the, the time for everyone to get in, but the, um, you know, whatever, um, there'll be like the shows, you know, it, it, it'll be, I, uh, I mean, and it, it should be really good. Um, you know, so they, they kind of have a formula and, you know, they'll, the one thing that's interesting is, is that they, they used to like, um, have that surprise person sitting at ringside and I mean, maybe they will, but I haven't heard of anyone because all the surprise people were pretty much announced this week. You know, Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz and um, um, uh, 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 not Christian, uh, um, Alex Zane, you know, those guys. Although, you know, the thing is, is like right now, I mean, the difference is, is like a year ago and two years ago, there were all these guys in the indie scene. And if you put them in the crowd like Keith Lee or something like that. Everybody would go crazy. And now there's no crowd to go crazy. But there's also, there's like nobody on the independent scene that the crowd would go crazy for anyway because anyone who's anyone has pretty much been scooped up by AEW Impact or um, or WWE. So it's not like, it's not like there's like, you know, these these guys on the indie scene that are like really big names that are, you know, I've waited, you know, I mean, you would, the only guys you would get would be guys, you know, like if you sign somebody from New Japan or you sign somebody from, uh, you know, I mean, even, even anyone from Impact wouldn't even be a big name right now if you signed them because the few guys, um, I mean, I suppose Ethan Page, but his, you know, his deal isn't up yet anyway. And if he even, you know, you know, as far as like his deal's coming up, I know that, but, um, you know, AEW, everyone's got five-year deals for the most part, so there'd be nobody from there you could get. Um, so, yeah, it, it, and New Japan's signing guys for longer deals, although all those guys on New Japan Strong, I mean, that they didn't sign, they're all getting picked up. I mean, the one, that's the one thing is, is like anyone who's got 
any level of talent. I mean, it's, it's like it's like back in the late '90s where you know, in, not not to the same degree. I mean, in the '90s, WCW was signing guys up for a hundred thousand dollars a year um, that that you know had never even wrestled before because they thought that they might be good, you know, or they might have potential. And WWE, well, WWE did even you know. They signed um, Lesnar and Mark Henry and for a quarter of a million, and Kurt Angle uh, was offered a quarter of a million. I think he signed for less because he waited three years to come, but he still got six figures. And this is before they ever even wrestled, you know, just, um, you know, just based on the fact that somebody thought that they had potential. Uh, and nobody gets that. Nobody gets that now. No one's, you know, getting that kind of deal. I wonder how much the, um, the, the, uh, basketball player that they just signed is getting because she was a pro basketball player um i don't have i should have her name on the top of my head and i do not um well while you're getting that they did confirm that four war games tomorrow uh two competitors enter the first period is five minutes and the subsequent periods are three minutes so okay. everybody will be in after 14 minutes. So these do not need to be 30 minute matches. So they did sign. They did tone it down. Yeah. So it's um, um, Anriel Howard, who is the most decorated female athlete the company has ever signed. Um, she was a uh, honorable mention All American basketball player at Mississippi State and Texas A and M. Uh, second round draft choice of the Seattle Storm of the WNBA although she only lasted a few games and she was cut, which was just in the 2019 season. So it's, uh, you know, a year ago. I mean, it's not like she's been out of sports or anything like that for any length of time. And, um, yeah, one of the best rebounders um, in the country, um, you know, for her junior and senior year. Well, actually, her sophomore year as well. So um, that's going to be a very interesting signing because – They've never had a female athlete of of that level ever in the company, you know. Um, you know, you know. I mean, like Bianca Belair was very good at track, but um, you know the the highest level of uh, women's sports. I think the best athletes, generally speaking, are going into basketball. I mean, even more than volleyball. They've had some volleyball players, um, but not not. I don't think they've had any. I don't think they've ever had an all American volleyball player that's that signed. I mean, they've had people who played division one um you know ashley you know charlotte flair played division one but she wasn't like you know she was not an all-american or anything like that so um and um you know um howard's like you know 511 homecoming queen the whole bit it's going to be she's going to be a real interesting uh signing now of course you know a lot depends on her her passion for pro wrestling i mean if she you know, some athletes come in and, and think it's fake and beneath them, and they're not going to make it. And some people uh, really want it. And uh, But if it's if it's something that, that, you know, that somebody saw, hey, this really, you know, nice-looking woman who's uh, a super athlete, um, you know, you don't know. You don't know. But, I mean, the fact that uh, they sign, you know, they usually put them through pretty hard train, training sessions. And... Uh, I mean, you know, if you get a, a, someone like that at that Division One level, um, I mean, they're going to go through training sessions pretty well. But, you know, as far as, like, they can see if they're not taking it serious or not. I mean, the coaches there can see it. And those people are not going to get signed, no matter what their credentials are, if they if they see that they don't really, that they're looking kind of down on the thing. So um, she's going to be interesting. So anyway. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.